CLI on a cross-platform IDE for C and C++. Download now. Hello, uh, welcome. So my name is Jim, uh, Jim Pasco. Today what I'm going to talk to you about is senders and receivers. So we've got 20 minutes. Uh, and my goal for this talk really is to um, impart my sort of framework for learning about senders and receivers. Um, so there's lots of excellent talks. Um, there's lots of very good materials out there. Um, and what I'm going to share or well, try and contribute is to give some ideas or some advice for how to navigate them. Um, so if your goal is to learn about senders and receivers, but maybe you're finding it difficult to know where to start or you're trying to plug that in around a very sort of busy life, um, then this talk is for you. So there's a link to some example code that accompanies the presentation. If you clone that from GitHub, you'll get my examples. Um, I've tried to make the code quite easy to build. Um, so it should build probably with the tools that are on your laptops. If you've got Boost installed, um, then it should build quite easily. Right, so I'm gonna start with a poll. Um, how familiar uh, do people feel with senders and receivers? So perhaps put your hands up if you, you consider yourself very comfortable, you know, you're sort of at expert level. Okay, that's good, because if loads of people put their hands up, I was gonna say, oh my goodness, this is, you know, it's gonna be way too simple for you. Um, how about people, do you feel as though you have a sort of a reasonable grasp, strong grasp? Yeah, oh, Lucian's here. Well, Lucian, Lucian you, could have, you could have put your hand up on the first one, I think, to be fair, but, um, uh, and then perhaps, you know, this is, about, you know, I'm sort of, I'm probably about number three, I would say. I've got some understanding. I've got a reasonable grip. Yep. A few more hands going up. Yep. Um, and then maybe number four. So just starting to get into it, starting to learn about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, great. Well, okay. Well, if you sort of answered yes to two, three, and four, which is pretty much everybody, and Lucian was very, very humble, um, then in that case, this talk is for you. So, um, like I said, what we're going to do, 20 minutes. I'm uh, going to touch on all the kind of the major features, the the kind of key points. There are some bits that I am going to leave out. I'm not going to talk about things like schedulers because I think those concepts are fairly natural um, to you guys anyway, fairly intuitive. So I don't think there's a, a great deal of um, uh, uh, value in me going over that. But um, without further ado, so senders and receivers. So what are they? Okay, it's a standardized asynchronous framework for programming. So standardized as in C++26. And what does this give us? Well, primarily it gives us composability between libraries. And this for me, because I do quite a lot of asynchronous programming, this is a very good thing um, because it means that I can have like a networking library. So something like ASIO, I can have that feed into a threading library. So something like CUDA, for example. Um, and then I can have that uh, be related down into some embedded IO. Um, and the fact that all three of these will now exhibit a standardized interface and I can compose between them is fantastic because it means that I can reduce or eliminate glue code. And for, for those of you that have done lots of asynchronous programming in the past, if you've tried to plug asynchronous programming frameworks together, um, chances are you'll find that actually a lot of the problems are in the glue code. I mean, it's always those bits that, um, that's where, where the race conditions tend to be. Um, the other thing is, the, the, I think there was a sort of a, an early, certainly when I was talking to people about this early on, I think there was a um, a view that senders and receivers were there to kind of replace coroutines. Um, the good news is that they complement each other. So there's, you know, differing approaches, but they they complement each other very nicely. Um, it's not an either or uh, thing. So, you know, coroutines work very well with senders and, and, and vice versa. Okay, so this is a simple sender on a slide. Um, what I've done is I've taken an ASIO timer and I'm using that as a proxy for an asynchronous operation. Um, so as I say, this is, this is a simple sender on one slide. Um, senders describe asynchronous operations, so work, uh, but they don't trigger it. And that's also quite important, quite interesting. So declaring a sender is a bit like declaring a callable, you know, like a function or a lambda. And that's beneficial because what it allows you to do is to create arbitrarily complex task graphs before you actually schedule anything. So you can tee up quite a lot of state and quite a lot of, um, get quite a lot of things in position before you actually trigger the, the computations at a moment of your choosing. So this line declares this type as a sender. Basically what we do is we bring sender t into scope. Uh, this line declares how the sender can complete. Um, and this is done with a list of callbacks. So in this case, I'm declaring that the sender can complete successfully. 
So it runs to completion, in which case it returns an int. I'm also saying it can complete in error, in which case it also returns an int. Um, and there's a third type of callback uh, that can be declared with another function called set stopped underscore t, and that's related to cancellation. So if you've got, like I said, if you've got an arbitrary task graph that's quite deep, and then part of your computation, you know, in, in an early phase, early outs or returns, um, then you can cancel operations that are either in flight or not yet started. This is the connect method. Um, what connect does is it takes a receiver, um, which we'll look at in a minute, and it returns an operation state. So again, that's something that's quite important. And that's basically the result of combining a sender and receiver together. So when you connect them, you get an operation state. And there are some rules about what you do with operation state. So you've got to, basically, once you trigger the asynchronous operation, you cannot move or delete the operation state. So that has to remain intact and in place for the duration of the asynchronous operation. So again, you know, I guess lots of you have done asynchronous programming in the past. We know that actually another common class of, of bugs in asynchronous programming is related to lifetimes and things like buffer expiry before, you know, the continuation is actually written and stuff like that. OK. All right, so here's some main code. Um, so, you know, I think this is quite useful just to see how we would actually call this and do the setup. So this is a function here that you might actually um, offer up as an API function. So you can see I'm, I'm create, I've am I'm got my async timer. I'm creating it like this. Um, I'm going to, uh, in main, I just create a sender. That's what task timer is. And then I'm going to call it, I'm going to use an adapter. So this is, this is then. Um, what then does is it takes an input sender and it waits for the input sender to complete and then it takes that result and then it passes it to the function which calls it, which operates on it. Um, and then sync wait uh, is a sender consumer. So this is basically an algorithm that takes a sender, doesn't return one, but it, it blocks on the current thread until the sender returns its result. All right, so here's a little bit of CMake. So I often think it's just quite useful just to sort of see, you know, kind of a little bit of build infrastructure just to see how this would be built. Um, so what we're doing is, uh, so this is using CMake 325. So like I said, it's, you know, something that should be available to you guys on your laptops. Probably you've got it, got it now. Um, and that's for std exec because these examples are using the NVIDIA uh, P2300 implementation, which is called um, std execution. Which you probably have all heard of. Um, so uh, it uses CMake 325. I'm also using the um, CPM package manager, which is quite a nice way of doing this. Um, who here uses CPM in their code? Yeah, Jason? Anybody else? No? Um, definitely worth a look. Uh, I would, uh, you know, I mean, it's really nice sort of for doing this kind of thing because it means you don't have to either, you know, put on your user uh, the requirement to go and get this um, or uh, you, you know, it means you don't have to bundle, you know, sort of static um, versions of code with your with your examples and stuff. So I'm building this. I've turned the tests off, um, uh, but I've left the example. The build examples are, are on. Um, so if you if you download this and run it and build it, what you'll get is you'll get the std exec examples will be built uh, as well as the code, so you can you can use it. Um, and then this is just about including boost. Um, and uh, various other bits and pieces. Right, any questions on any of that before we, before we carry on? No? No? Okay, all right, adapters. All right, so this is a term that you'll hear. Um, so adapters are asynchronous algorithms for common asynchronous patterns. Um, uh, so you've heard, well, we touched on then, which takes an input sender and takes the, well, runs that sender and then uh, takes the output of that sender and then calls the function that you supply as well along with it. Um, something else that's quite useful is continues on, uh, which allows you to change execution resource. So what I mean by that is you can start on, let's say, a CPU thread pool and then migrate your task onto a GPU thread pool. Um, so that's also quite useful. And then bulk, which is quite an interesting one. So that runs a task, um, uh, well, Basically, what bulk does is it takes an input sender, an integral, and a callable, uh, and then it calls that callable uh, for each index in a range 
along with the value produced by the input sender. So um, an example of that might be you might have a sender that calculates coefficient, and then you might want to use that coefficient to uh, as an input into an algorithm, which you then run on a range of data. So Lucian has a really good example in one of your papers, which we'll get on to, don't you, where you do um, Mandelbrot. I think you do Mandelbrot with bulk, don't you? Yes, exactly. Um, and there's also some quite interesting, uh, um, you know, specializations for bulk because you can you can use bulk to take single threaded code and make it multi threaded very easily. That's correct, isn't it, Lucian? Yeah, yeah exactly. All right, most adapters are pipeable. Um, and what I mean by that is when I say pipeable, uh, basically the bitwise or operator has been overloaded um, for the purpose of creating sender chains. Um, uh, and that's quite, it's a really quite a nice syntax. So it looks a bit like ranges, um, but yes, uh, you, can, you can pipe, so you can, you can have these um, uh, chains of senders through piping. Um, and CPPREF and STIDX, these are some good examples for adapters and pipes and so forth. So these are places to go and to have a look at, uh, you know, to have a look at this in, in action. So I mentioned coroutines. Um, so good news is that senders and receivers, they actually work quite well with coroutines. So like I said, um, early on when I was talking to people about this, and particularly, I think a lot of people had started off by trying to understand senders and receivers by looking at P2300, which is the senders and receivers proposal. Um, and, you know, that's, the, I, I think basically a lot of people sort of took from that, that uh, senders and receivers were kind of there to, as a follow on from coroutines to some extent. Um, but the, the good news is that actually they work quite well, well, they work very well together. Um, so they complement each other. All the way to balls are actually senders, which is a good thing. Uh, and instead except we have a task type now, um, which means that you can actually co-await senders. So with very little work, um, you can do you can do co uh on senders without having to do a lot of extra extra stuff. Okay, got some information coming up and some key references. Um, so let's talk about those. Uh, so, okay, key references. Okay, this is kind of the slide I think I wish I'd had right at the start when I was just starting to learn about senders and receivers. So Eric Niebler wrote a really good um, blog post uh, last year. I think it was I think it was about February time. Um, where it, it really, it really, in quite a nice sort of digestible um, twenty-minute read, you can really sort of understand, you know, kind of the, a lot of the thinking. The one thing, I mean, there is some code that accompanies uh, that blog post, but um, you can't actually it, it compiles on Godbolt, but you can't actually run it because it doesn't link. There's some, you know, not without doing some extra work. There's some missing, some some of the functions aren't fully implemented. Um, but nevertheless, that's a very good article and if you take that and take the code that I'm showing here in this presentation and put the two together you should have quite a nice sort of basis to you know to start you know start from. Um, Lucian uh, so your papers were really helpful these are really good um, uh, so yeah the one in December is kind of the part one wasn't it and then part two was in February um, and also uh, did a talk on Tuesday which when that comes out um, you know that's definitely worth a look. Um, the, yes, so that, you know, um, but I definitely would recommend Lucian's papers. So they were very good. Uh, Goran did a very good talk at CPP now, and um, particularly the second half. Um, so if you've not seen that, that's definitely worth worth a look. Um, Dietmar has done a lot of networking work as well. So uh, that that talk, that ACCU 2024 talk, and also um, Dietmar's talk from Tuesday. You know, these are very, you know very good. Um, uh, uh, resources as well. There was a talk from Ben Dean, which I particularly liked, which uh, got an embedded, it's a, it does senders and receivers in an embedded context. Um, so that's one I would definitely recommend. And also Ben has a very good way of kind of explaining um, how the adapter chaining works and, you know, the kind of the sort of onion layering that comes out. Um, and then obviously NVIDIA has lots of good, you know, the stood exec resources. I'd probably, what I would do is I would probably focus on the first five bullet points first, build some understanding, and then, you know, the stood exec resources tend to be sort of, you know, kind of real tour de force type deep dives, um, you know, so come to those a bit later, I would. But. All right, some advice for learning. Um, uh, so start with small examples. Um, and I guess, you know, probably I'm, you know, uh, I would start with Eric's, which was very good. Um, 
take the code from this presentation and use it in combination. That's really, you know, kind of the two are designed to sort of complement each other to some extent. Um, uh, I, I would use P2300 as a reference. Personally, I'd, uh, I would come to it a bit later. Uh, it's very useful when you've built up some understanding and you've got some understanding of what's going on. But coming to it immediately is quite, you know, um, bear in mind it's a paper designed to change the you know change the standard. It's not per se a learning aid, but it is very definitive. It's got lots of information in it, so um, I'd come to it a bit later. Uh, persevere with the key references; um, they are very good. Make use of the code that's here, and also just as a sort of kind of comment, perhaps to the people a bit early on in their careers as well. Um, Make sure you're thoroughly understanding the concepts before you move on, because it, it, you know, some of this stuff it does get very complex. So, you know, build a thorough understanding before you, you know, kind of layer on something like coroutines. All right. Um, the other thing I was going to mention as well is I'm the ACCU Bristol and Bath Meetup Coordinator. So we meet uh, just across the road here. So if anybody here can, you know, is able to come, is is local to the conference hotel, then um, we are meeting next Thursday uh, for a meetup. So we're going to do another evening of live lightning talks. So um, have a look on meetup or uh, give me a shout in the break and, um, and you know, please come along. But